Hello everyone, my name is Pixhorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. Here in Bedrock Edition for the second day of our Nether Survival Challenge. I hope you guys are having a good day. In today's episode, I need to craft myself another wooden pickaxe because this thing looks like it's on its last legs. And then we're going to step outside and we are going to get our first blackstone tools. As you can probably hear already, the nether is an absolute nightmare of ghosts right now, so hopefully this will not take super long. We could also make some golden tools, which I'm probably not going to do because they have about as much efficiency as wood. They are slightly faster, but they don't really mine anything that wood doesn't mine and while they do mine it a little bit faster, they are going to break a lot faster too. So I'm going to step outside of here and see exactly what kind of chaos I'm in for and probably skip over the top of this lava column before the ghasts completely obliterate my front door. Our goal for today is to grab some blackstone, probably from this here basalt delta, as long as I can avoid getting myself squished by too many magma cubes. Then we are going to head back into our little survival shelter and make our first stone tools because blackstone whoop there it goes <laughs> blackstone is the nether analog for stone in the overworld basically mining blackstone will get you all you need to make anything that is made with cobblestone in the overworld so things like dispensers stone tools all kinds of stuff like that even observers and things like that although naturally while we are here in the nether we're not going to be getting hold of any redstone so it seems unlikely that we'll be able to automate anything and as i've mentioned before since i don't really know all that much about the differences between java and bedrock edition i'm not going to be automating all that much instead we're going to be playing it safe we're going to be playing it fast and loose in the survival progression and we're going to be just making our way through to the netherite tier of tools by the end of the week but wow it is nice to be looking at a stone pickaxe in a crafting table now that we've acquired some of this blackstone let's make one of those let's make ourselves a blackstone axe as well and despite the fact that axes don't do any more damage in bedrock edition the way they do in java it is nice to have one of those for some slightly better tree choppage I'll also make myself a stone sword and then we can just cook the rest of these materials if I find something that is worth cooking. But right now, it seems like we cannot turn any of this warped stem into charcoal, so I'm going to be relying on shroom lights and stuff like that. How about we make a stone hoe as well? Again, I'm kind of forgetting that hoes are an important part of material gathering in the nether right now. So uh, yeah, let's head out there and go searching for more stuff. So I think one of my earliest goals here is going to be to trade all of the gold I have with piglins and then acquire more gold because these these guys are going to be the key to the next steps of the survival progression, namely acquiring iron. Piglins will be able to chuck iron nuggets at you and that is what makes the survival progression in the nether viable for the next steps. Hopefully these guys will eventually end up trading us some more stuff. Did that guy just trade us stuff instantly? It felt like I right clicked on him and he immediately gave me nine quartz because I certainly haven't mined any of that for myself yet. Let's see what he gives us this time. Oh, an enchanted book. Thank you for the soul speed too. Not like I have enough iron to make an anvil, but I appreciate the gesture nonetheless. How about you trade us something? Oh, it's because he's frightened. That's probably what it is. He's frightened by the zombie pigman being around, and so he is trading stuff to me basically instantly. 14 nether brick from that guy. Let's see if we can get anything else from you. Hopefully a few more iron nuggets down the line. Some fire charges is not bad either, and if we give him our last gold ingot, maybe we'll be able to get something else. Now, of course, one way that we could end up getting obsidian is by trading... Yep, there we go. <laughs> An excellent example. Is by trading with these piglins. And so, if I got enough obsidian that way, and I already have some fire charges, I could basically leave the nether immediately, because all I would need would be 10 obsidian to make a nether portal and the fire charge to light it. However, I'm not going to be playing it that way. My goal is to get all of the tools in the progression without having ever left the nether, and then we can return to the overworld once we've made the netherite equipment. It's going to be my plan, at least. So I think the next steps is probably going to be to find a better source of wood, and then go ahead and harvest a little bit more of the gold ore, provided that doesn't mess with the piglins too much. And I am wondering if maybe heading down here back in the direction of the warped forest that we started in is going to be a good idea, because potentially as we mine our way down here, we might end up finding a lower section of that warped forest if I can hopefully build a safe staircase for myself so I can get back from it afterwards maybe we'll find ourselves some more wood because wood is something that we will need in large supply oh yes I see it there in the distance fantastic I was hoping that we'd be able to wrap around and get hold of that and it's looking like there's some exposed blackstone here and there which is going to be a lot safer than getting it from the basalt deltas biome 
Now, some of you may already be wondering exactly how I'm going to get hold of diamonds in the nether. Well, it has been the case for a while that diamonds can be found in nether fortress loot chests. So I feel like nether fortresses are potentially going to be our best shot at getting hold of diamond gear. Alternatively, we could end up raiding some bastions and they might have diamond gear in some of the treasure room bastion loot chests already made for us. There's a chance for diamonds there as well, but there may also be a chance for diamond equipment. And I think even some of the other bastions have diamond equipment in the form of shovels and things like that. So getting diamond is not as far-fetched a concept as you might expect expect here in the nether. Of course we have iron that we can trade from the piglins and then we can start looking for ancient debris once we have enough diamond gear under our belts. But we're going to have to do all of this basically without any enchantments unless we can get enough iron to make an anvil and find some enchanted books or as the case may be trade them from some piglins. So this is really going to be quite the challenge and it's going to be a fun test of exactly how well we know the nether update up until this point. Now, as far as the terrain here goes, there are two biomes I've not yet been able to track down. We've got a warped forest over there. We've got nether waste and a basalt delta. We are missing the crimson forest and a soul sand valley. So I wonder if we'll be able to encounter those fairly soon. I know that soul sand valleys are also likely places for nether fortresses to spawn. So we will be on the lookout for one of those. And I do have coordinates enabled, so we can hopefully take a few coordinates if we need to. It's so fun seeing the striders enjoying the lava lake down there. And there goes the wooden pickaxe so we can switch to stone and this is all going to be a little bit faster awesome stuff all right we've made it out on the other side of the little tunnel that i dug through the netherrack here for safety just so i wasn't walking around the edge of the lava lake with ghasts around we're going to step down into this warp forest and i think it's time to start harvesting a larger amount of warped wood hopefully we'll be able to grab a little bit of bone meal from skeletons here and there if we're able to find a soul sand valley and that's what's going to allow us to grow a little bit more of this warped wood and not just clear cut everything that we can see but i think i'm going to take some of the warped warp blocks as well just so we can use those for bridging and other things and then we're going to start chopping down the trees here so we can gather a little bit more wood now naturally while we are using that cave up there as a base i need to make sure that i'm not straying too far away and that i can at least navigate my way back using landmarks i've got the coordinates enabled of course so we can make our way back there using those if necessary but i think it's going to be worthwhile just to make sure we can retrace our steps here so we don't end up getting too lost there is a solitary piglin in this forest with a sword and i kind of feel like testing out whether or not he is okay with me mining some gold ore in the vicinity so when when the ghasts are feeling a little bit more docile i'm gonna mine this and see how he feels about that. I'm not hearing any objections so far. So if he comes over and whacks me in the back with a sword in a second, you will know that he's annoyed. But the most important thing here in this warped forest is, of course, that we don't look at the Enderman, which I've been doing a pretty decent job of doing so far, which probably means now I've said that, I'm about to look at one any second now. But I think the best way to play this is probably going to be to barter with these piglins at every opportunity, since I won't be able to make any kind of automated bartering setup. So basically any gold I find, I'm just going to give it straight to them, and hopefully they'll be able to chuck me something useful. In this case, another block of obsidian that might eventually go towards our nether portal either that or i'll find a ruined portal that i can reconstruct somewhere elsewhere in the landscape one thing i would love to get from these piglins is some string because i need to make myself a bow pretty shortly and i don't feel like killing striders in order to do it i also haven't seen many striders that aren't out in the lava lakes inaccessible to me right now so i think it would be kind of good to get some string so we can make a bow and deal with those ghasts obviously arrows is also going to be a problem but maybe if we find a zombie chicken jockey we can take care of the chicken to get some feathers or maybe even just take out some skeletons if i stumble across a nether fortress or a soul sand valley let's see if ah yes perfect okay i was really hoping that we would have a crimson forest bordering this somewhere nearby that's going to be a nice easy place to look for piglins maybe also farm some hoglins if we want to get some pork to eat instead of the mushroom stew but the mushroom stew has been doing pretty well for me so far and as you can see mushrooms are freaking everywhere in the nether so it's very very easy to just pick up a bunch of these make sure that we leave a couple so that they can propagate again and it should be fairly straightforward to make ourselves a renewable supply of food one thing that's worth noting here though is that we aren't able to make 
armor out of either wood or blackstone. We are going to need some sort of precious material for that, whether it is gold, iron, diamond, or eventually upgrading to netherite. Now, I am fairly certain that I don't want to upgrade my tools to iron or use any iron equipment until the next episode as part of like the whole survival progression thing we're trying to do here. So I'm thinking the next best option might actually be gold. Wait a second, is an enderman taking damage from fire? That might be a very good opportunity for us to acquire an early enderpearl. See if I can dig myself a little shelter in here, aggro this guy, and there we go. Uh, see if he gets angry at me, and I can probably get an enderpearl from him if I'm careful here. Yay, we got one. Awesome stuff. We got ourselves our first enderpearl. And that's going to be a little bit useful if not for, you know, acquiring enderpearls to go to the end in this series. But we are going to try and do a little bit more exploring. And it may be necessary for a quick escape or even getting from a higher section of the nether to lower. I don't really fancy my chances enderpearling to a higher section of the nether, especially if there is lava involved. But you never know. In a pinch, we might just need to do it. So I'm going to make my way back to the house, grabbing a little bit more of this gold ore as I go. We can take stock of what we've got and then decide what our next steps are. One thing is for sure, I definitely want to do something about these ghasts because they are exploding all the scenery around me as I try and make my way back to the house and I don't want to spend any more time on fire than is strictly necessary. So yikes, <laughs> let's make a move here. Let's head back to the safety of the house and I'll see what I can do about bartering with some piglins, get myself a bow and then finally we can have our revenge. Alright then, let's take stock of what we've got here. There is some stuff I'm going to leave behind here in the chest and we can probably get back to these coordinates pretty easily. It's at 120, negative 120 and 80 elevation, so that's not too bad. We're going to bring the ender pearl with us. I'll probably leave the fire charges here with the obsidian so we can use those for a nether portal a little bit later. The wooden sword thankfully didn't end up needing much use. We could get to the stone sword right away and I'm going to make myself some more blackstone tools, specifically another stone pickaxe because we are definitely going to need one or two of those on our journey here. The rest of this I'm fairly certain I can leave in the chest without it being vital to us. We might want some glowstone if we end up making a respawn anchor a little bit later. I've got some gravel so that we can potentially use that for elevation changes, which might mean I need to make myself a shovel as well. So let's grab a little bit more wood here that we can use to make ourselves a shovel. I've got plenty of brown mushrooms, but I'm running low on the red variety and they're not really growing in here all that much. So I'm going to step back out into the nether, hopefully dodge the ghasts here and there and grab a few more red mushrooms from down here on this nether wastes plane. There is a little bit more gold ore here as well, and I'm going to barter with some of the piglins while I'm here to see if any of them will chuck me some string so I can finally make myself a bow. There's a whole bevy of piglins here. We've got one there, we've got one over here, we have one here, and we have these two there and there. And hopefully, once they've each finished inspecting the gold, they'll throw us something. Some leather, not too bad. A little bit more glowstone dust. Thank you for that, sir. Oh, <gasps> Are you serious right now? Yes, <laughs> the rare chance came through for us. And in episode two, we have acquired our first netherite tool. A netherite hoe is mine. Well, much as I have pledged to make sure that we don't upgrade to netherite until the last day of this challenge, I am not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I think the netherite hoe really needs to be protected. It also does better attack damage than my sword does, so we might end up using that as a weapon as well as a farming implement. And yeah, let's give this a couple of test swings. Beautiful. <laughs> the netherite hoe, the grim reaper has come at last. Also not to be overlooked is the fact that we just got 14 leather from those piglin trades, which is enough to make myself probably a set of leather pants and a leather cap which is definitely more armor than I am currently working with, so I'm 100% on board keeping the jumper out there for the brand, I guess. And we could always gather a little bit more gold and make a chest plate out of that, but I've got my gold boots on right now. I'm kind of comfortable with those being the main piece of gold equipment I have. I reckon we can trade a little bit more with these piglins. We are so lucky to get a netherite hoe from bartering with these guys. It is genuinely one of those trades that is so rare it isn't even in Java edition, so I guess, yeah, we did go into the Bounds of Bedrock edition there a little quickly. But it looks like we have a little bit more soul sand, some fire charges, we got some crying obsidian at long last, 
And I wonder what the other people over here dropped. That looks like a little bit more soul sand to me. Well, one thing that occurred to me to deal with our torch situation is that we can make soul campfires without the need to make torches at all. A little bit more leather from this guy. Perfect, perfect. That's going to be really useful. Enough leather for a leather tunic there as well. Great stuff. And now I'm fairly certain that with some soul sand, we should be able to make a soul campfire. If I just make a few more sticks, like so, there we go, the recipe appears in the recipe book, because you can make these with soul sand and not soul soil, and that is going to mean a couple of things. First of all, if we need to ward off any piglins, then we can, and these apparently don't stack, that's interesting, did not know that. Yeah, we can use this to ward off any piglins, we can also use it to cook hoglin meat if we want to, but... I think the way I'm going to be using them is as beacons so that we can make sure that we know which way is home if we get lost exploring further out in the nether. So I'm thinking maybe we head back down to where that crimson forest was, lay down a couple of these soul campfires, and we can use those to make sure we always know which way is home. I did also want to make sure I have a good supply of red mushrooms on me, so let me grab a few of these, take the ones that are on adjacent blocks to each other. That should mean they have a little bit more room to spread and grow. Very, very good. Let's see if we can grab some more blackstone as well. And then I think we're going to check out that crimson forest over there. The poor piglins over here are surrounded by zombie piglins, which are, as usual, paying them no mind. But it really seems like the uh, the zombie piglins are corralling them into a certain area. With a little bit more bartering, though, I got myself enough crying obsidian that I think we can now make and charge a respawn anchor. So let's go ahead and make one of those. <laughs> the nether is the place to use them after all. And we're going to place that here here in my little kitchen area. We'll charge that up with glowstone and we'll set our spawn on it here with an empty hand like so and now we have a spawn point here in the nether right in front of our chest with some extra supplies in our nether house and that is a good feeling my friends. That's very very good. Okay let's make some more mushroom stew and let's head out. And at this stage in the episode, I have basically two objectives left. If possible, I do want to do a little bit more piglin bartering, which means acquiring a little bit more gold. And I am hoping that at some point we'll be able to find a nether fortress or a piglin bastion, which will give us some sort of chance at the loot that it's not possible to get simply from bartering with piglins. So gold is something I'm going to be on the lookout for and also some other structures. But for now... I think it's time to set foot in this crimson forest for the first time and probably be savaged by hoglins if I don't have my wits about me. <laughs> Looks like we are in the clear for now, although there is a lot of nether gold ore with piglins nearby, which I don't really want to risk mining because I did look on the Minecraft wiki and these guys will aggro if you mine nether gold ore, so that's something to be concerned about. I think while I'm here, I'll go ahead and try and get myself some of this crimson wood because we'll need that to make a few more wooden things if we need those further down the line. I still need to make myself some fresh tools because I'm not used to how quickly stone tools wear out. Oh, there it is. Okay, <laughs> there's a hoglin. All right, let's see if we can keep you at a distance. All right, there we go. Not too bad, not too bad. And I think, yeah, maybe we can throw down a furnace and cook up some of these raw pork chops simply so that we can have something better to eat than a mushroom stew, which doesn't stack in my inventory. And where we are at right now in the search for a nether fortress kind of brings me back to an argument that I've heard made about this update where nether fortresses seem to be harder to find. And there are fewer biomes which will actually generate a nether fortress. So to a certain extent, I think it is true that nether fortresses are a little bit more rare. But I think more than that, it's just that the nether is such a different landscape now. It is a little bit more difficult for players to traverse. It is a little bit more varied and there are more landmarks in between. Oh, apparently the piglins are going to help me out with this particular hunt. All right. <laughs> and they're doing the dance. Oh, bless them. They're doing the dance. I'll dance with them. There we go. Hey, <laughs> well done, lads. And there's another hoglin just dropping from the <laughs> landscape over there. That's pretty bizarre. Anyway, congrats on your on your victory. Well done there. Uh, yeah, I think it is genuinely the case that there are probably still as many nether fortresses out there as there were before. But there's more interesting stuff in between them, and that distracts the player somewhat and makes you think, instead of a nether fortress, you've found a soul sand valley, or instead of a nether fortress, you found a crimson forest or something like that, or a bastion, where, in fact, I'm fairly certain you're probably still going to find nether fortresses fairly frequently if you manage to explore that far.
The difference being exploring that far is now a bit more of a challenge than it used to be. And I'm just going to keep my eyes open here, but that looks like it might be a soul sand valley to me, which means potentially a nether fortress will generate within that. And if nothing else, we'll be able to go and farm some skeletons, because skeletons right now are something I'm on the lookout for, so I can get myself either a damaged bow or some arrows, which I can use once I've made a bow of my own. But I don't really fancy going in there without a shield, so I have grabbed a little bit more gold from the ceiling, where the gold ore has been generating here and there, and I'm going to try and trade it with these piglins in the hope that one of them is going to chuck me some iron nuggets. I'd really like that, because then I could make myself a shield, and that would mean a little bit better protection from these arrows. Oh, <laughs> apparently that hoglin was already damaged. Gents, anybody got some iron nuggets you feel like giving me? Don't worry, no pressure, just, just curious about what your wares are right now. <laughs> oh, a bunch of ender- nine ender pearls? Are you serious? Wow, that was one heck of a trade right there. A little bit more quartz, a few other things got thrown at me. I don't see any iron nuggets though, but we got some obsidian, probably a little bit more quartz, and the magma cream there is actually a huge win if I was to have a brewing stand, but unfortunately I don't, because that would require me finding a nether fortress. You, uh, you don't know where a nether fortress is, do you? Alright, this guy gave me some soul speed boots and then immediately picked them up and put them on himself. Well, that seems a little bit rude to me, doesn't it? I think I might make him some gold boots so that he will trade up and then I'll be able to get the soul speed boots from him, because at least that is something made of iron that I could A, use in that soul sand valley, or B, smelt down for iron nuggets. I never thought I'd see the day when this game would be convincing me to give pig people some better shoes. <laughs> but here we are with a few more gold nuggets and a few more gold ingots crafted up into some gold boots. And I think I definitely need to pop down this soul campfire and use it to cook up some of the hoglin meat because this is actually going to be really worthwhile to do. I've run out of mushroom stew, I have the four bowls here and I could make some more of that but having stackable food in my inventory, especially with something as worthwhile as pork chops, ain't going to be such a bad idea. And there we go, with 17 pork chops in the hot bar and one in the belly, that feels good. Although I did just get some charcoal actually from breaking down a soul campfire, how wonderful. That's how you get yourself some torches, folks. Nice. All right. Well, at least I feel a little bit better having those in my hand, and I can head back to see if that piglin with the soul speed boots is still where I left him. I'm pretty sure that's the guy up there. Goodness knows how he got up there in the intervening time, but it looks like he did, so I'm going to chase him up there, see if he wants to take these gold boots, because they should trade anything that they are wearing for gold boots, which is a nice way of getting your armor back if you die to piglins and they end up wearing all of your best diamond or netherite stuff. Hey, buddy, how about these gold boots then, huh? <laughs> Oh, yep, yeah, he's assessing them. Does he like them? I think you'll find he does. Give me those soul speed boots. Come on, buddy. I'm not going to be able to put them on right away, but yes, we got them. What do they have? Soul speed one. Okay, well, it is better than nothing. At least it will mean we are a little bit less slowed down by the soul sand, and I'm, I'm a lot happier having those in my inventory. Not going to wear them quite yet because my gold boots are the things that's stopping these piglins from attacking me in the first place. But let's see if we can find anybody else to trade just on the off chance that we get ourselves enough iron nuggets for a shield. Well, they are certainly keen on chucking me some obsidian. I have three obsidian now, plus the two that's back in the chest at the house. I have a feeling that we'd be able to assemble a nether portal very easily and some crying obsidian and some fire charges. Yeah, they're definitely telling me to leave, aren't they? I do feel like they are telling me to leave a little bit. <laughs> well, I did just check the wiki to make sure that they drop iron nuggets in Bedrock Edition and they do, but it's about a 2% chance of them dropping iron nuggets and I've traded a lot of gold ingots to these piglins already. You can see in my inventory I've received a fair amount of obsidian, enough nether brick blocks to start my own nether the fortress and a few other things besides but frankly nothing that I'll end up using to make any kind of iron stuff so I think I'm gonna brave it I'm gonna head over to the soul sand valley myself and see how we end up I've always got my netherite hoe which I can use as a melee weapon in a pinch it'll do a little bit more damage than the sword will in fact let's try it out on this hoglin here and see how we get on <laughs> Yep, it's pretty good at playing keep away, that one. I don't know how much durability it will have, but I'm pretty sure it's up in the thousands, so that should be not too terrible. And yeah, we can always cook these pork chops later when we can make a few more soul fire campfires. For now, though, I think I'm going to make my way around here via the terrain, try and avoid the lava lakes. If I could find a saddle and saddle up some striders, that is definitely going to be the way to look for a nether fortress. But over there in the distance, 
I think you guys can see it too. There is a bastion, so it's time to go and explore that and see if we can track down anything that's going to help us in our quest for better equipment. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> I've actually mined into a place that has some ancient debris. Well, that is not bad for a find. I will take a note of the coordinates and we'll make sure that we come back to this in a later date. But man, <laughs> not the time to be finding this stuff. I do not have anything that will mine this. Can I get it with a netherite hoe? Yeah, I didn't think so. All right, let's, let's continue on and I'll hopefully be able to come back and get that netherite at some point. Yeah, we just about made it out to the edge of this lava lake, dug that tunnel pretty well, and on the opposite side here, we're going to make our way into the Soul Sand Valley for the first time. Now, I'm probably going to switch to my Soul Sand boots as long as I'm out of the range of any piglins, which I know are going to generate on the edge of this crimson forest. Yeah, so I will try and stick... Whoa, hello. There's... Oh, I thought that was a piglin attacking me, but no, it was a skeleton in the end. I'm going to try and stick to the Soul Soil, which will not slow me down. But here, right here, we have ourselves a bastion for the first time, and this is going to be interesting to dig out. I don't have any kind of stuff to make a hopper on me right now, so we are potentially going to risk the wrath of the piglins. But I think one of the best strategies we can use here is to box ourselves in with whatever loot we can find here, and then hopefully they will pay us no mind as we open up the chests and dig through whatever resources they are hiding. They're not going to be keen if we take the gold blocks, but then again, the gold blocks will provide a very important amount of gold for us to barter with the piglins in future, because if we want to get full iron, that is something we're going to have to do. So I think one of the best things for us to do is going to be to block off all of the walls of this room, make sure we break line of sight with any of the piglins in the surrounding area. They are still going to be able to hear me as I mine this gold block. Can I do that with a stone pickaxe? Is it going to... No, okay, it's not. And now they are mad at me because I've just destroyed one of their gold blocks. That is a concern. We cannot mine gold blocks without iron tools. Maybe should have thought of that. But one of the things that is good to know about piglins is that their aggro actually has a bit of a cooldown timer, meaning that once they are mad at you for a short length of time, they will actually no longer be mad at you. So I can step out of my netherrack box a few seconds after having destroyed that gold block and... They ain't mad at me in the slightest, which is a very good thing because I'm going to use that technique over and over again as I explore this bastion. So with harvesting those gold blocks basically being out of the question right now, the thing I need to do is look for loot chests. And exploring these things without being able to fly around them is definitely a different sort of experience. This seems like one of the housing unit bastions. It's got the nether wart circle in the middle there. And I think if I hop down here, I should be okay to investigate that middle section. We'll probably just rope it off with some netherrack, and then hopefully I should be able to loot whatever is in this chest without the piglins getting too mad at me. So there we go. I've made myself a netherrack box. We can break this blackstone slab here, box myself in, and hopefully nothing should be able to get to me when I do this. Oh, there we go. We've got four iron. That's a great start. A little bit of magma cream here as well. Some gilded blackstone and some arrows. Bone blocks are kind of useful as well if we want to grow some stuff. Perfect. All right. I will take all of this. In fact, I don't really need the gilded blackstone, but I think I might as well. And the golden helmet probably won't be too bad to have on us either. Let's put the quartz away in there. Don't expect I'll need quartz for all that much, but maybe maybe we can consolidate the netherrack in here and bring that back with us. Well, we have found iron for the first time. That is a very useful thing to have and because we didn't have line of sight with any of the piglins I don't think they are mad at me for opening that chest I think they might be mad at me for breaking it but that's the only thing they'll really get mad at me for over there there is another chest so I'm going to perform the same trick there and then we might be able to next episode make uh, <laughs> some of this iron into an iron pickaxe mine the gold blocks that are around here and then we will be in business with the piglins big time all right, blocking off the ceiling in here, blocking off the walls, making sure there aren't any piglins within line of sight, and yes, a gold block. Amazing. We got ourselves a gold block and a ton of arrows. That's actually going to be super useful for us. Let's see what we can throw out here. Won't need the gold helmet, I guess. 
Definitely take the Magma Cream, and we could always mine the Gilded Blackstone at four gold nuggets if we wanted to. Not too bad. I like the Lantern as well. Very nice. They have little Striders around here as well, and I really want to be able to find either a saddled Strider or find a saddle that I can use to saddle up a Strider, and that way we could ride it across the lava and find ourselves the Nether Fortresses that way. I really think that would be super great, but for now, at least, I'm just going to block this off. We've got a double chest in here, which should hopefully have a decent amount of loot in it. Time for the moment of truth. Ta-da! Oh, yes! We've got a Snout Banner Pan. I'm probably not going to use that, but it's very nice to find one at Nonetheless, a little bit more gold in the form of some ingots. We'll throw the netherrack back in here, I suppose. And we now have enough obsidian that we can make a nether portal from scratch without having to worry about anything else. There is also, yes, joy of joys, some string. So I'm going to pop down my crafting table right here and use those sticks that I just threw on the ground. And I'm going to make myself a bow. At last, my arm is complete again. We have a bow and we have 40 arrows. That is not too terrible. As for the rest of the stuff that is in here right now, I'm fairly certain that we can leave that where it is. I'll top up my netherrack. I don't really need the chains much as they are a fun block to build with. I think this has been a successful episode. I think we're probably going to head back to the house, make sure we have all of this stuff securely tucked away in the chest, and we can wrap up the episode there. Unless they have more loot chests up here on the ramparts, because we might even be able to scrounge more resources out of this. If we can get enough iron to have full iron tools at the start of our next episode, we could accomplish so much more. So let's see if we can head up here and find those bastion loot chests that I'm fairly certain generate towards the top of these structures. Oh yes, jackpots right here, ladies and gents. Hopefully we should be able to block this off from any piglins that are going to find us in here. I don't see any spawning around the perimeter, so let's let's block off this entire thing. I can certainly hear them, but I think they are on the lower levels and the staircases. We're going to make ourselves a big netherrack room here, and hopefully the piglins will not care that we are looking through some of their most valuable possessions. All right, we're completely boxed in. Let's open up this one and find out what we've got. A fair amount more arrows. We've got a couple of crossbows in here as well that would work even if I didn't have a bow. That's not too bad. We've got another gold block and some more nuggets. Perfect. We'll take the bone blocks as well, maybe for farming some trees if we need those. In this chest here, we have another book of Soul Speed 3. Even more string. I actually chucked out the string from earlier. I don't think I will need too much more of that after this point. Not like we can go fishing or anything, although warped fungus on a stick, maybe. Mm, could be worth having, maybe. Maybe we'll just take the string anyway, just in case we need it, but I am prepared to chuck that out at a moment's notice if we find anything more valuable. And there are even two chests here on the opposite side, so we get to do the same vanishing act with the loot over here. Just going to make sure that we are blocked off once again. Don't want any piglins surprising me from above. And let's see what we've got. Oh, yeah, that's looking like a promising amount of loot as well. A little bit more gold nuggets and probably close to a full stack of arrows at this point. Incredible. And this one is looking very, very nice. Enough iron nuggets to make, well, one iron ingot, which is not terrible, and a little bit of extra gold besides. Very, very nice. 22 obsidian now as well, so we definitely have enough to make a pretty sizable nether portal. We are over a stack of arrows, and now we come into the inventory problem. Let's see if we can condense down any of this stuff here. You know, at this point, I'm confident that we can chuck out the mushrooms. I am done drinking mushroom stew, and I think we can have ourselves a decent old picnic on some cooked pork chops for now. As long as I can get some more netherrack back into my inventory because we need that block for bridging and tunneling everywhere as well as concealing ourselves in these bastions if we happen to come across any more. But that is not a bad haul. We have six iron ingots, room for a seventh from those iron nuggets as well and that means that we will at the very least be able to make ourselves an iron pickaxe, potentially some more armor or potentially some better tools in the next episode. Well, the next challenge, I guess, is finding my way back home. <laughs> and finally getting my revenge on these ghasts is going to be the sweetest thing about this whole deal. Yeah! <laughs> I need to be a little bit more worried about how many arrows I have, of course, because I don't have infinity on this bow or anything, but it feels good to have nearly a stack and a half of arrows on me and be able to take out ghasts whenever they seem threatening. That's great. That's so, so great. And see, there's mushrooms everywhere in the nether. We'll be able to get some more mushroom stew if we want to. And after triumphantly bullseyeing a couple of ghasts, I have made it back to my front door and I've never been happy to see, <laughs> I've never been happier to see those warped wood doors in my life. This is 
doing pretty well so far. Let's take stock of what we've got in today's episode. A whole lot of gold and some gilded blackstone. I picked up a few more gold nuggets as I was mining my way back through some of the terrain of the nether. So we now have a, an ample supply with which we can barter with some piglins. We also have the all-important iron and... With putting together another iron ingot from those nuggets and hopefully trading some nuggets from some piglins in the next episode, which they should trade, we will hopefully be able to get ourselves a decent amount of stuff. We now also have some crying obsidian and some regular obsidian so that we can make more respawn anchors if we want to and the nether portal that will eventually get us home. We now also have some magma cream, although it occurs to me that we don't actually have any means of getting potion bottles in the nether unless we find those in any kind of loot chests, but I don't know if they will generate there so we might be better off getting our fire resistant potions from piglins after all outside of that we got ourselves some soul speed boots which i didn't even end up using in the end <laughs> probably a good thing since a bastion was just over the horizon and we got ourselves some string to finally make a bow not to mention a few extra things besides and i think that is a great place to wrap up today's episode so folks thank you so much for watching this episode of the minecraft survival guide i do hope you've been enjoying this nether survival series it is possible to survive and thrive here in the nether and i think we're proving that my name is from pixorifs don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon take care bye for now